Welcome to Electro Online. On this next problem for J Advanced Test, well, there's a couple of things that are quite different here. Notice they give us some lists. They give us some list of nuclear decay processes. We have alpha decay, beta plus decay, fission, and proton emission. And then we have four nuclear reactions. We're supposed to pair them up. And then notice we have four possible answers where we assign a number to each of the PQRS representing the four different decay processes. Now, to me, what I found was the most confusing part is making sense out of this and trying to figure out how I should come up with the answers. But then finally I figured out all we have to do is put down PQRS for alpha decay, beta plus decay, fission and proton emission, and then put the right number here corresponding to the proper reaction and see which, how this list matches up with the correct answer here. For me, that was the most difficult part is to try to figure out how I should express my answers. But let's read the question together. It says, match list one of the nuclear processes with list two containing parent nucleus and one of the end products of each of the process and then select the correct answer using the codes given below. All right, so I find that if you're familiar with some of these particular reactions, then the whole problem becomes really easy and quick. So this is something you can rattle off in just a few seconds almost if you understand and know some of these typical processes. For example, number two is a very common thing that we see in the textbook where we have uranium-238 decaying via an alpha decay to thorium-234. Very, very uh, known kind of uh, reaction. And notice you're losing two protons, you're losing four nuclei, four nuclei, two pro protons, you know that's an alpha particle, so we call that alpha decay, so P matches up with two. So I'm going to put a two there. So that may be all you need to do to get the correct answer. Let's see here. Notice there's only one answer where P equals two, answer C, done, move on to the next problem. <laughs> Of course, you may want to ensure yourself you did this correctly by maybe doing some of the other ones as well, but hey, if you're very sure that this is an alpha decay and you know that P matches up with two and that's the only place where two appears for P, I would say you're done, move on. Three seconds and you're ready for the next problem. But let's just for the sake of argument and for the sake of learning, do some of the other ones. Notice when we go from oxygen 15 to nitrogen 15, essentially what's happening here is we go from an 8 to a 7, meaning we have 8 protons here, 7 protons there, but we're not losing any nucleons. We're not ejecting any nucleons. We're simply getting rid of a positive charge. Well, that can only be done via a beta plus decay, because beta plus is essentially a positive electron, a positron, and that's the only way you can remove a positive charge without actually ejecting a proton, or an alpha particle which contains two protons. So I would say that in this case, one pairs up with Q, so Q is equal to a one. Now let's go and check to see if we're still correct. Yes, indeed. So far, answer C seems to be holding steady. All right, next. We're going from bismuth to lead. Notice we're losing one proton. Oh, this is wrong. Oh, no, no, this is not wrong. Yes, this is wrong. Lead cannot be 104, can it? 104, 104. 184. Ah, I was going to say something was wrong here. 184. All right, now we're, now we're better off. Okay, notice we're losing one proton. We're going from 83 to 82, and we're losing one nucleon. So the only nucleon we're losing is a proton, which means we're removing a proton, the number of neutrons remains the same, so that would be considered proton emission. So that means S and 3 are paired up, so put a 3 there, and notice that yes indeed, S is paired up with 3 in our correct answer. And finally we have one left to go, R, R is fission. Fission, of course, is where we take a large, a large nucleus and we split it into two smaller nuclei. And let's see here, notice we have uh, plutonium, and that then goes ahead and becomes lanthanum and something else. Now notice this lanthanum is much smaller than plutonium, so the other element we end up with, we can find out what that is by taking 94 minus 57, 94 minus 57, that would be a 783, and so I can't think of it right away what that is. 
but uh, that would be the other daughter product. So you can see that it's a clearly what we call a fission reaction. We have a large nucleus being split up into two smaller nuclei, and that would be um, four, and R would be paired up. And sure enough, notice we have two, one, four, three. And just for the sake of argument, let's go look up and see what 37 is. 37, what's 37? Okay, 37. Ah, it is rubidium. Okay, all right, there we go. So it's uh, lant lantern and rubidium is the, is the fission daughter product of the uh, fission reaction from plutonium. And that is how it's done. Well, it turns out that by just picking the first one, notice, noting that this was an, an alpha decay, and that's the only one that has a two in the front, so right away we knew that C was the correct the answer. Sure, the others, it's only, you only have to do it two, two times rather than three. Yes, right, right, yep. Um, any one of them, yeah, could have, could have given you a quick second, second guess, but I would be strongly inclined already, knowing that this is an alpha decay, that we're done. <laughs> that would be the problem. <laughs> and use those seconds, those precious seconds, to move on to the next problem. Now you have five minutes on the next problem instead of only three, which uh, is a crucial benefit. So this is a relatively straightforward one, but again, it's memorizing some of these uh, particular reactions. So some of these are the more common reactions found.